What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, we are here with a brand new LP series. We're going to be playing Red Faction Guerrilla, and I don't know how frequently I'm going to upload this series, because this is kind of one of those games that I've always wanted to do an LP on. I played it back when it first came out on the Xbox 360, and I got the PC version for like $3.99 or like $2.99 or something ridiculous. I have like this weird habit that when I see something for really cheap on Steam that I already have on the Xbox, I almost always will just buy it for the PC because meh, why not? I love being frivolous. And so in my frivolity, this is one of those games that I ended up with even though I already had it. And actually I do like the PC version a lot better, that's one thing to be said is that I do enjoy the PC version quite a bit more. If you don't know what Red Faction Guerrilla is, Red Faction Guerrilla is a game in which you take control of Alec Mason and you fight as kind of an insurgent or a terrorist trying to overthrow the Earth Defense Force or the EDF, I think that's what it stands for which is an occupying force on Mars, and you're like, wow, they're called the Earth Defense Force, like, why are they on Mars? Shouldn't they be off like, mm, I don't know, defending Earth? But just let's, let's just ignore that for now. Suffice it to say, they're on Mars, they're repressing all the Martian people, they keep applying their boots very liberally to the sides of our heads, and we're like, you know what, we can't take this anymore. And so we channel our inner 80s rock god and just say, we're not gonna take it, and we just start blowing stuff up with landmines and basically becoming the bad guy. And so that's Red Faction Guerrilla in a nutshell. I'm glad you've decided to join me here. Let's go ahead and get the game started. There's going to be a fair amount of storyline that we're going to have to trudge through at the beginning of the game. I don't remember the storyline, but for the viewers that are watching, I'm not going to talk through the cutscenes. That's just how I do things here at the Nerd Castle. I would prefer for you to get the full narrative as we go through. And so there it is. Let's get started. I'm going to go on normal. I, I just want to explain this decision. I've beaten the game on hard on the Xbox. I'm going to go on normal just because I want this to be a fun playthrough. I don't want this to be a playthrough in which I'm stressing all the time and just being like, Bleh. actually, we might do hard. I don't know. Hard does make the game quite a bit more challenging. That's a tough call. Like hard actually feels like the normal mode, but I think that was just based on where my mouse cursor. Eh, we'll just go with normal for now. I've beaten it on hard, but I want this to be a laid back playthrough. So let's be laid back. Fun ride? Yeah. A blast. How's mom? She misses you. Sorry I missed dad's funeral. Things here have been hard. No one expected you to come halfway across the system. What was that? Well, the EDF. They own the road and everything else. Forget the propaganda. Free Mars is over. Come on. Red Faction? Didn't enough people die the last time? We're under martial law here. Prison camps. Torture. Death squads. People need something to believe in. Well, this is it. I've got your gear over there. So here's how it works. It'll be a couple of weeks before you... ...wait here. Like I was saying, the sooner we get to work, the sooner we get paid. Come on. All right, and so I think that's going to be the last little bit. I think we start the tutorial now. I'm going to try and breeze through it. Here's the site I was telling you about. It was a research outpost once, before the marauders killed the scientists. Marauders? 
You don't want to be caught out here after dark. But it's a good place to find salvage. I'm here to mine, not hunt for scrap. On Mars, scrap is like gold. Got your sledgehammer and charges? Good. Let's see what you can do. Shit. Up in the sky. EDF gunship. Didn't think they'd be out here today. I'll keep an eye on it. You get the salvage. All right, it's salvage time. Let's see what we can salvage from this situation. We're gonna be blowing up all kinds of stuff. Half the salvage on the ground. Pick it up so we can trade it. Half this game is just gonna be me annihilating shit. That's pretty much why this game is so awesome. This game was largely overlooked, and I think it's because it came out sometime around the time. Don't quote me on this. I could be totally and completely wrong. Don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty sure this came out at some point around Grand Theft Auto on the Xbox 360. But I don't feel like this game ever really got the critical acclaim that it deserved. It is a really, really good game. I've enjoyed playing it. I think I've played it through a couple times, actually. I don't really remember. It's been a long time. It's definitely been a few years since I weaved my way through this tapestry. Do you weave your way through a tapestry? I don't think you do. I think you might unstitch your way through a tapestry. That might be the most efficient way to get through. And it's appearing as though I'm getting some tearing, so I may have to do the V-Sync in just a couple moments. But we'll do it after this episode. It'll be fine. We also have a, like, a wheel radio. Th we got a radio wheel right here, or we can just press 1, 2, 3, and 4 for our weapons. It's whichever you prefer. I do prefer the weapon selection on this versus the Xbox hey, 360. Use remote charges and take down that big structure right there. Oh, I'm gonna. This big right structure. You can set two charges before you detonate them. Remember, you can swap weapons and still use the detonator. Come back to me if you run out of charges. All right. We'll blow that up. And so we have these little dynamite charges that are quite a bit of fun. They're actually one of my favorite weapons. Hurry I use... Up, Alec. There it is. And you want to put them on the support the struts. The you know what's going on. Alec, the Red Faction could really use a guy like you. To do what? What are people doing out here? Whatever it takes. I'm not a terrorist. Dad. You think I am? The EDF are wiping out towns. Alec, we need help. Hey, you got me into enough trouble Earthside. I just want to do honest work here. That's what we're fighting for. If we don't resist, they'll take everything. Enough. You'll see I'm right about this. They'll all be wrong. Exploding random stuff in anger. And so really what you want to do when you go up to these buildings is they are all structurally sound. Sometimes they all perform a little bit strangely. Like you will come up... Like, you will come across random buildings that, for whatever reason, like, they'll be able to stand up with just one pipe in their construction undestroyed. You'll be like, that's really, really weird that that single piece of corrugated steel is holding up the whole building. But, by and large, if you destroy the support struts and you throw the thing off balance, it will fall down eventually. And that's actually one of the most fun things about this game is just about everything is destroyable. Now, typically in earlier Red Faction games, even the terrain was destroyable. Not in this one. They got rid of the destructible terrain, but they made everything else destructible. So if you can see it and it's not made out of rock, guess what? You can blow the hell out of it. Hell, you can even blow up some of the stuff made out of rock, like the concrete. Doesn't really matter. It's all splodable. We need to hide. From what? Daniel Mason, you are under arrest. Surrender or we will open fire. Alec, run! Run! Is this me or does Daniel Mason look like, like, bald, angry Joe? <laughs> Defense Force changed the face of Mars. They terraformed so we could breathe the air. They built bases, checkpoints, watchtowers. The Liberators soon became an occupying force. And now they killed my brother. Dan said they'd take everything. For me, 
they already have. Drop the weapon. Now! <laughs> you guys afraid of a hammer? Drop it, smartass. Hey, what right have you got to trash Your my- Your brother is Daniel Mason. Yeah, he was. He's dead. This trailer and its contents have been confiscated by the Earth Defense Force. We're placing you under arrest. For what? Don't play dumb with me, Miner. You're Red Faction. Look, I just shipped here from- I guess you work fast. We found these detonators among your possessions. I'm a mining engineer. I have a permit for the- It just got revoked. Shoot him. I'm not sure that I trust that guy. I distinctly remember something. I don't know. He's wearing like a he's wearing like a Gestapo jacket. That's that's all I have to say. It has one of those little collar things. It seems very sinister. It's like something Dr. Evil would wear. Mason, my name is Simonia. I worked with your brother. <laughs> Lucky you. I know this is a lot to take in, but you're going to have to trust us. Why? Because you don't really have any other option. The commander thought you should have this field manual. It'll help you survive out here. I admire the excessive amount of pouches on your body. I mean, that's a lot of pouches. Do you carry a lot? And those are mechanized high heels? What do those run at Macy's? We don't need that. It's fine. She has mechanized high heels, and they look like they're horribly uncomfortable to walk in. Look at her gait. That can't be... That's got to be doing at least some minor lumbar damage. I don't know. Maybe not. Hey, what's up, other miners? I just joined the Red Faction. I see you have an ergonomically designed gun so that you might murder in the comfort of your own wrist. That's pretty sweet. I like your ergo gun. That's pretty awesome. I assume none of you have carpal tunnel. That's good. It's hard to murder when you have carpal tunnel. Stay away from the carpal tunnel. That sounds like the thing that you would go through to get to like the main city and wherever it is you live. Well, first you gotta jump onto the 80, and then you go through the carpal tunnel, and then you're gonna make it to the Bay Area. I don't know, that's what it sounds like to me anyways. This right here is the weapon crate. We can reload and get stuff out of it. We've got a gun now. They give you an assault rifle to start out with, which makes me pretty happy because the assault rifle tends to be my favorite weapon in every game. I just like rapid fire kind of, I don't know, pip guns, I guess. Guns that don't do a whole lot of damage but are reasonably accurate and fire at a high rate. The thing you're going to find in this game is that the game simulates the fact that you aren't a trained fighter by making all of the guns have huge reticle blooms. And so... You see that circle right there? That is quite literally how big our reticle bloom is. And so unless we're point blanking people, we're, right, we're not really going to get a whole lot done. Now let's have a look at the map here. The map of Mars is divided up into a number of locations. There's Dust, there's Parker, there's Badlands, there's Oasis, there's Free Fire, and Eos, as I recall. Where's Free Fire at? There it is, Free Fire's right there. I was going to say, I missed it. It's a, How come Free Fire is the same color as Parker? I'd feel left, if I was Free Fire Zone right now and they didn't even assign me my own color on the geopolitical map, I'd be like, what the hell, man? How are you going to say I'm a distinct area but not include me in all of your overall fun and shenanigans? It's not okay. I want to be part of the map, but I want to be distinct as well. This little flare right here is for one of the missions, and so, yeah, let's just do the mission. I think that's what we'll start out with. This is an open-world, free-roaming game where there's going to be all kinds of just random missions scattered all over the place. I haven't really decided how I'm going to work my way through those. I think we're just going to play, have a good time, blow some stuff up, because I felt like playing Red Faction Guerrilla. Mason, this is our former base of operations. We had to clear out before the EDF discovered it. Now we just need to cover our tracks. I know you're familiar with demolition, so maybe you can help us out. We need that building destroyed. 
blow up anything that the EDF could trace back to us. Think you can handle it? Oh, that sounded like a challenge to me. Can I destroy shit? I have a career in demolitions, my friend. Do you understand the dedication to annihilation it takes? Piece of cake. We're transmitting the base coordinates now. I have a fireman's jacket. That's how that's <laughs> that's how much stuff I blow up is I just wear a fireman's jacket all the time. Go Davies. You go Davies. How'd you get caught up in this? The mining conglomerates found a huge ore deposit beneath our colony and tried to force us off the land. When we resisted, the EDF rolled in. It was a massacre. I'm sorry. I found refugees from other colonies and our numbers grew. Your brother joined us soon after. <laughs> it was always Dan's problem. Couldn't run from a fight. If there were more like him, we'd have a chance of winning this thing. Maybe. Okay, so off we go. Those crystals that I just destroyed, those are actually pretty important. You probably want to whack as many of these as possible while you play the game. The first zone of Parker is pretty much just like a tutorial. We're not going to come across anything too difficult, but there's a number of things you need to know about the map before you start playing the game. A, this little bar on the left-hand side is the EDF control. This is how much of the area Eddie controls. That's what I call them anyways. That's not what the, they call them the drones in the in-game slang, but I call them Eddie because EDF, and I thought it was a more creative name. Anyways, it might not be more creative, but that's what we're calling him for the remainder of the playthrough. And so Eddie has this bar right here. This is his control over the area. The lower this is, the slower he is to respond to various threats and things that you do. This is contrasted by over here on the right-hand side, you've got the morale of the Red Faction. The higher this is, the more likely it will be that any random person on the side of the road will take up arms and fight for you if they see you under fire by the Eddies. And so let's say that we're like in the middle of the street in a shootout. At 20 morale, not many people are going to jump in. But if we have this bar up at like 80 or 90, the random passers-by and their cars will start to get out. They'll jump out of their SUVs, they'll jump out of their ridiculous semis, their Martian semis, and they'll just open fire on the EDF, and they'll actually provide us with cover. And you're going to need that for some of the later game challenges, because there are definitely things that you're not going to be able to do by yourself. You're going to need some homies, as it were, if we wanted to convert this into Saints Row. And so let's go up and around. We're going to do this mission. I think that's going to be the last thing we do. These crystal deposits are good because they give you free scrap. Each one should give you about 15 scrap, as I recall. Anything, if you look down at the bottom left, you see that little green pip at the top right of our mini-map? That's the alarm level. It goes green, yellow, orange, red. Once you go past yellow, it's kind of hard to get it down lower, but it will go down eventually, so long as you don't open fire on anybody and as long as none of the bad guys see you. It just sort of depends. I'm going to sprint around this way. And I want this crystal right over here. Oh, there's two of them. Good. Scrap is important because it allows you to buy new equipment, which is going to help you out. You can upgrade your existing equipment. So most of the random stuff that you're going to pick up off the eddies, like the assault rifles and pistols and things, can't be upgraded. What can be upgraded is most of your mining equipment. So like our explosives, we can build our own guns too later on. We get like arc welders and like all kinds of crazy stuff. And this sign, I don't like it. Just to show you that you can destroy it in honor of a man who chose not to live under a regime of oppression. Ahora entrando Parker. It's also in German. What you will find is actually in this game there are a lot of different voiceovers. There are Spanish voiceovers, German voiceovers. I think I heard Russian one time when I was playing it. There's a lot of different voiceovers in this game to simulate the fact that a lot of people come here from Earth thinking it's like the promised land of milk and honey and mining. But you don't mine either milk or honey, so I'm not sure where they got that idea from. Mostly it just seems like a dusty mess to me, and it seems like it'd be conducive to those big nasty black boogers you get after you go camping. That you always have to like clean out after the fact. That's basically the feeling that I get at Mars, is that you would just eternally have nasty... Mason, an EDF unit is heading your way. I'd hurry up and finish the job. I didn't even start the job you yet. You said this was going to be easy. Alright, I'm at the base. Good. Use whatever you can to bring her down. So you want to be far away when you blow stuff up. We can only drop two charges at a time. I can upgrade that a little while later. These propane tanks can be really useful for blowing up buildings, remember that? These central walls, sometimes you want to charge these central walls because they'll keep the building up in spite of the fact that all of the outer struts have been destroyed. So I don't know if that's how it works actually with physical engineering because I'm not an engineer. I'm a geologist. Geologists and engineers... Okay, so EDF are here, and that means we're going to get ourselves into a good old-fashioned shooty-outy. 
We can go into fine ammo by pressing F. It doesn't help incredibly, but it does help. You do want to go for headshots when you play this game because they will take out the enemy. Oh, and there's our first foe. Headshots will take out the enemy a lot quicker than just body shotting them. Apparently their armor is like really high grade. It makes sense. I mean, they are obviously skimming off the top of an entire planet's worth of resources. So is that guy still alive? Let's go ahead and finish him off. Oh, there's another one right there. Nope. You always want to blow up those blue canisters. They're hydrogen canisters or something like that. I forget what they're supposed to be, but they drop a bunch of scrap when you blow them up, and they destroy stuff. And so, really, it makes the playthrough more interesting. And since I'm recording, my goal in all of this is to blow up as much stuff as... Hey. Hey, what was up with that, man? I'm already dealing with the eddies. Now i got to worry about random pieces of steel trying to kill me? Come on, now. That's not right. I'm on your side, ignoring the fact that I just blew up an entire building made out of you and your compatriots. We're only at yellow alert. These crates right here will allow you to reload if you need more ammo. Just keep that in mind. I think I've got a pistol now, too, and the pistol is really, really good. The pistol is surprisingly good. That's one of the things they probably won't tell you when you first start playing this game, is that the pistol is insanely good. It allows you to snipe headshots, that's why. You can snipe headshots from super deep with the pistol. I'm gonna keep my eye open. That right there, what is up with that? This car right here, it looks like the deer leader designed this car. <laughs> Like, oh, it makes the sound that a weed whacker makes. It's like the Martian version of a Vespa. This right here, this is a car with some balls. This is a car that you can strap some truck nuts to. We could also steal their APCs if we were feeling potentially grabby and klepto-inclined, but I think I'm going to leave it where... It, get out of the way! Meh. And so the bar at the top center of the screen is the HP remaining in our vehicle. When it gets down to the bottom, it explodes. Probably due to the fact that we have giant, like, oil tanks or... Ah, I missed! Damn it, I was trying to get him, but I just wasn't proficient enough at vehicular murder. Now, we can reset... You said this was going to be easy! Throughout the game, we can reset the alarm level just by going back to our safe house. Yeah, I'm fine, by the way. You've done your brother proud. Yeah, he had the same definition of easy as you. And so, after each mission, there's a couple things. I tend to leave the missions till last, and the reason why is this little thing called a morale bonus right here. At the end of every mission, you're going to get yourself some freebie scrap, and you get more freebie scrap. You get one free scrap for every morale you have in the sector, and so technically, it's a really, really good idea to max out morale and then do all the missions because you'll end up getting, you know, an extra 400, 500, 600 scrap by doing all the missions at the end after you've actually leveled the sector than doing them at the beginning. If you do the missions at the beginning, you're actually cheating yourself out of a pretty considerable amount of morale. So my recommendation is to roll into a new zone, raise morale as high as possible by wiping out easy targets, then you start wiping out the high value targets to get these even higher, and then you do all of the main storyline missions. And so this is probably going to be a pretty long playthrough. I am using this series to sort of gauge the possibility of doing more open world playthroughs in the future. Usually I'm pretty terrified of open world games because they tend to be really, really long, and it tends to take a lot of recording and a lot of just it's just it's a long long process you end up with like a hundred episodes it becomes very tiring stressful and so forth so I'm using this to gauge whether or not I series like angry, but we don't have the luxury of playing it safe your brother understood that Mason we need your help there's new info in your gorilla handbook that will be useful so as we stand here, like I was saying, I'm going to use the last couple minutes in this episode. Let's run around. I'm going to mine some things and maybe blow some stuff up in the back. Oh, hell. Well, the good thing about this game, if you ever get stuck in a wall, you can just kind of mash it out of the way and just be like, meh, to hell with your irrigation pipes, to the buzzards with it. And you can just annihilate it with your hammer. And so having used, oh, we just came out the pipe. That's pretty cool. Hey, what's going on, buddy? You just jackhammering? Can I help? Here, I'll help you. See, this is why we never get anything done. You look at these guys over here, they break rocks, and they just put things in a rock dumpster. This is my life. Just moving rocks all day long. Just bust the rocks, then put them in a dumpster, Lord. That's what we do over here on Mars. Great. And now some asshole came by and destroyed my dumpster. <laughs> this is what happens. Remember, Red Faction, I'm in charge. You mess with me, I break your dumpster! And now you have to pile rocks on little flat pieces of steel and carry them almost like a little gurney. But anyways, I'm using this series to really sort of gauge interest in open world games. I do enjoy open world games, I play them very very extensively in my own time, but I tend to keep them away from the channel because I'm always nervous about the breadth 
of a open world game in that it might take a ton of editing and I'm all right all right calm down Shay I'm just walking through here with my super awesome Jesus look at the size of that neckerchief that thing is the neckerchief of a man who has an especially cold neck most of the time that guy's aiming a gun at me which makes me feel nervous stop that Why are you aiming guns at me homie but anyways, I'm using this to gauge interest in open world series from now on. If it ends up being very, very popular, I may very well do series like Skyrim and things like that. It's just something that I've sort of stayed away from up until this point. Let's go ahead and I'm going to pop. Actually, no, I think we're going to break the episode off right here. So my name is Blattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for the first episode of Red Faction Guarilla. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody. I'm going to try and turn on. I'm going to turn on the V-Sync and I'm going to turn on subtitles. So before I get a million comments asking me to turn on subtitles, I'll do it in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and I do.